What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Welcome back to the Soundproof Hunger Room. You up in here with Kyler Park, Sean, and you know that dark skinned brother over there. They call him the 18. How y'all been doing out there, man? We've been just keeping everything in motion, trying to stay out the way, though, because y'all crazy out there in the streets. 18, what you got for him? I'm happy and I'm sad all at the same time. Well, we gonna talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Lions put their they hands on somebody last night. Man, yeah, y'all did more than put hands but, on somebody. But we lost a key member of our defense. But nothing, you know what I'm saying? We're going to do what we need to do. You know, shout out to all my Cowboy fans out there. Hope y'all all right this morning. Hope y'all ain't beat, beat your old lady. And nothing like that. But, you know, sometimes you got to sit on the sideline. You can't can't step up there. When you can't cheat, you can't beat us. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Period. Uh, you know, them Cowboys, they always get them high expectations for whatever reason. You know. And they fall short every year. Every, and, and the best part about it, we beat him on his birthday. Yeah, we gave Jerry Jones a gift like that and just keep on giving. Yeah, that was, that was pretty bad. You know what I'm saying? So, but other than that, <laughs> you know, my Tigers, you know, lost in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? They weren't supposed to be there, but they lost five games. I get it. Man, congratulations to y'all and the Mets, man. I, yeah, yeah, I just shout say out that. to the Mets. Congratulations, y'all made it way further than everybody uh, thought y'all was going to do. Y'all turned it around mid-season yeah, and yeah, just yeah, kept yeah. pushing. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's about when you get hot. Yeah, and that's what happened. But congratulations to that. Uh, I don't want to talk about baseball because we got pounced on <laughs> up out of there. We was hurt all year. so But it is what it is. Uh, my Raiders suck. Right. Uh, you know, I'm supposed to go see them out of town and it's more so like now I'm just going to hang out I don't even I might leave my gear at home might bring a hat or something a cap right 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 (laughs) but they really piss me off right now but anyway that's on the sports that's on the sports let's get into some of this news yeah uh I'll start off with the local local stuff um yesterday they had a uh a pride parade. I I knew nothing about it. I didn't even know that, that it was something that was a uh, a normal thing. But it was a lot of people that was there <laughs> that I know that that aren't gay. They were just there to support. Yeah. So I, I I didn't know anything about it. But in um connection with that was I remember uh, earlier this summer doing the actual pride celebration that they do here in Atlanta, and they had the first uh global Black Pride celebration where the dude. They had to set up at the hotel and somebody had went in and uh, tore up all their stuff and defecated on uh, on a flag. They caught the, they caught the dude. He lives in Pennsylvania or something. And uh, they caught the guy and they finally said that they're going to give him hate charges. How do you feel about that? One more time. Give me that one more time. I want to <laughs> make sure I'm clear what I say. Okay. He... Uh, during that parade, well, the one that they, not the one they had yesterday, but uh, the celebration that they had, I think it was back in Memorial Day weekend. That's when it was. And um, and we even spoke about it here where they had all their stuff set up. This was the biggest black pride celebration um, here in Atlanta. And somebody went in and just kind of tore up all of the stuff, knocked down all of the uh, booths and everything that they had set up in the hotel and defecated on the on the flag. So when they caught the guy, I remember when we talked about it, um, it had just happened like a day or two prior, so they were still looking for the dude. But they caught him, and they finally yesterday said that they were going to give him hate charges. And your thoughts? Hate man, crime. That, man, that ain't going to stick, man. I don't, I don't think that's going to stick. Like, he ain't touch nobody. He, he tore up some ceramics. He tore up. He ain't hit nobody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we see our we see our names defecate uh, you know, this uh disrespected days and days and days and days and days. So mm. I mean, that ain't gonna stick, man. I don't know, man. I mean it them people, they, them, they, people they got, them people they got the power to make it happen. Exactly. But I, that's I, I think I by the, I think by the end of it though, he, he ain't gonna get that. Hate crime is is real, bro. Like that's a that's a strong charge, bro. Right. 
and, and, and that's what they're putting on him. But they also said uh, he did ten ten thousand dollars worth of damage. That's all they mad at. So that's what they mad at, though. I think I think it's gonna push through because, like you said, they get a lot of a lot of power behind them. Dog, hate you know? crime is is heavy. That's a heavy charge, right? And you got to look at most times, like um, people now say that as soon as somebody says something that you don't agree with racially, oh, you racist. Mm-hmm. I think the same thing with with dealing with with the gay community. As soon as you say something that is against them, they want to line it up as a hate crime. Imagine this. We live in a world where you can tell some arts and crafts and get, get charged with a hate crime. Mm. I watched a man die on TV the hands of police. And they took that off the off the flow quick that mm. it won't be in charge of the hate crime. Right. Imagine that. The exactly. World, the world we live in. And, and I wanted to dig into that because you got to look at every single last one of these um, police brutality cases, these fatalities where they're going in and just, just shooting uh, unarmed yeah. black people. All of those should be hate crimes uh, yeah. if we're going to talk about somebody going in and That's what I'm saying. tearing, like, up, hey, tearing like, up some boots. Yeah, he, he tore some bars and crabs, though. Right. So, he got a hate crime? Yeah. They pushed it. Uh, Fanny, Fanny, uh, Fanny Lewis did it. Man, I mean, she got, like Willis. Yeah, she got to do what she got to do right now. She got, you know. Yeah, she got a lot of work. She got to do what she got to do. You know what I'm so, saying? But yeah, push that. So we'll see what come up with that up out of that situation. Um, another situation, one of the people I love to talk about, Elon Musk. Um, Here you go. <laughs> you you, you, you got to get off of it. I like to follow stuff, okay? Because oh, yeah, my man. thing is, if, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but. You keep following it, you're going to see a, a pattern. So Tesla stock <laughs> drop went down about 8% because they went and they unveiled their uh, robo-taxi um, situation. So they was trying to uh, roll out to where they have these taxis with no drivers. It don't have no steering wheel, no pedals. It's just the car that just show up, you get in, it take you where you're supposed to go. Just like the Tesla. Pretty much. But, you know, it ain't going to be no control. It's literally, you under somebody else's control. There, there I mean, won't be anybody in the car. No, no steering wheel, nothing. So if you get in there, you can't. If it take you somewhere else, you just you just stuck. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to be. I don't know. Something. But the investors didn't like it. So that's why the stock dropped for 8%. So, again, I'm telling y'all. I hope the vest investors didn't like it though because it takes jobs away. I don't think I hope they just don't like it because it's technology. Because if that's that kind of stuff roll out, oh, it's gonna be some people out of job. Oh, definitely. definitely. So I think I hope that's why they didn't they didn't want to go for it. Definitely. So yeah, yeah, I, I had to talk about my boy. You know, I'm gonna be like you don't have to move on. <laughs> I'm gonna be liking that job, man. I'm gonna be liking that, but. Uh, uh, that's about it that I got like on a on the news perspective of just regular news type stuff. Uh you got something you wanna get I mean, on? I just you know, I got wind of um Trump in Detroit the other day. You know, he said uh he said something that was actually, you know, if you look at what he was saying instead of looked at, you know, the surface level, mm-hmm. he was right. You know what I'm saying? In 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 some ways, where he said of, uh, you know, if she become president. You know, the world gonna end up like Detroit. Let's rewind back to 96, mm. 97, 98, when Democrats, Bill Clinton, mm. and uh, a NAP, NAPCA, I think it was called, and they wiped out the auto industry and they moved it all overseas and stuff. And that's when it started, the downfall of Detroit, that's when it started. I don't know if people ever looked at the history of when it started, but mm. that's exactly when it started and the city started going down. You know, you, when you call it the Motor City, that's because that's where y'all building cars at a, a rate nobody else is. Right. And that's I think that's what he was referring to. Like, she's going to move a lot of jobs in places that, you know, it don't benefit us here over here in the United States. Is that true? I don't, I, she, she ain't won yet, so we don't know what she do, right. what she going to do. You know what I'm saying? But if that if that's where it's looking like it's leading, then she's right. Then he's right. You know, you start taking these jobs, moving them all around and things like that for people that want to don't mind making lower money to do it. It's going to go that way. You know what I'm saying? I'm not pro 
Trump, but mm. he's not lying in that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I think when when I first heard it, of course I got triggered. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He ain't never walked the streets like that, man. Like, I, I take that personally, you know what I'm saying? Because you, especially for somebody that ain't never walked the streets, mm. it's still a joke today that the city went bankrupt. But now I want to, Detroit is the most booming place you want to be at right now, yeah. outside of Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody talk New York. Don't nobody talk California. They talk Detroit and Atlanta. Mm -hmm. The places to go. Houston, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to things like that, you know, we have to look at the agendas for real. You know what I'm saying? And he would I don't think he would say nothing that a he needs to, he needs Michigan to win. You know right, what I'm saying? He definitely that's so the swing slide. To think he's gonna go up there and say something that crazy thinking he'll still win because people we take it serious like mm -hmm. that'll sway people just right there right so you know let's let's not don't use my state man definitely my city it, it's a swing that, state you know what i'm saying it's For a that swing nonsense, state. man you know people had me hot I'm i like, think it's y'all in uh delaware i said let me Two go look and see state. exactly what's going on here man. yeah you know what i'm saying so that's all i i got on that i was just like you know people y'all love y'all boy clinton mm -hmm. that was y'all boy he played the the saxophone, he wore glasses, he got some head. Smoke oh, a little weed. Yeah, y'all love him. If I was an, if I was an auto worker, man, I'd be looking for that dude, man. Yeah. Back then. I um for me, and again, we still talking about politicians. Um, Trump was just as complicit because during his time, the industry the, the industry, I mean the industrial jobs yeah. went down. Absolutely. Um, because it's the same thing we're talking about. So for me, I think it was it's a good talking point for him to kind of warn that, you know, this is what might happen if she takes over yeah. based off of it being democratic. Absolutely. And so that's why when I look at, and like I said, a lot of them, you can find something they going to say positive. That sounds good. But when I look at it, I've seen what you've been in office. Mm -hmm. I've seen what you're capable of. I don't know what she's going to do. You know what I mean? I'm one of them type people that, okay, I've tried that before. Let me try, Let's something, try else. something else. Yeah. You know, Let's it's only four else. years. Right. You know, because that's what I think it is. I say, no matter whoever wins, yeah. definitely if he wins, it's only four years. Yeah. And if she wins, I think they just want to groom whoever's next. Yeah. So, yeah. And so that, that's how I look at it. And like I said, even when he got in, I was like, oh, the world over with. But I still had to get up and do what I yeah, had to do regardless. Saying. Everybody's talking about I made all this bread. Like, you know, <laughs> yo, I didn't get it. Yo, you know, so, <laughs> so, people still made me go to work. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So that's just how I look at that stuff. It I had got so much to where I was looking at so many uh political type shows and, and the talking points and this and that. And now it's literally they just it's a show. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, just good they just throwing, you know, I'm just looking at the commercials now. They yeah. just throwing dirt. It's, it's they added they editing is crazy. That's I'm just why I'm looking at it now. The yeah, the editing, the yeah, editing is crazy just, now. So, I know, you know the one they was talking about with the trans and getting oh, them done. Man, and the, I was like, Y'all don't see how hard they who, cut who, those up. Whoever <laughs> in their first hundred days, well, I'm pretty sure if she wins, she got a hundred days to change the abortion law, or she'll lose everything else that she ever tried to do. Oh, she gonna jump on that's that. What, that's what I'm saying. Like that's that's what it comes down to. We know he ain't changed. He gonna make it rough. Like he gonna swipe. He gonna wipe out every other thing to make it possible for you to get one. I think if she does, she got a hundred days mm. to get that done. If that ain't done, it's over. Anything that. If she gets in, anything that has to do with women's rights is going to be first and foremost. It, it, it better be because I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, if, these, so. if these ladies sacrifice their households, take these, these ass women they're going to take, voting for her and all that, yeah. and she don't do right on that, it's over. Yeah, she's going to jump on that immediately. That and then I think one of her talking points that I'm not too sure about is her taking care of the middle class. I think that's a platform because I don't. They, yeah, they they sell that to us every, every time. time. Yeah, every time. That's and that's, that's every time we point. still yeah. get screwed. Every time I'm still I, like I told you, man. I'm, a, I'm telling you, I'm gonna be in the grocery store. Somebody gonna have that green card. I'm gonna throw my steak right up there. Like, hey man, go on pay for that. <laughs> I'm paying for that, man. Go ahead, go on pay for that, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I tell you. Yeah. yeah, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, moving on, uh, this is something that I, I ran into, um, a lot of, a couple of things we're going to talk about came up in the group and what I've seen on social media, but I saw, um, Angel Reese went out and she had some pictures in lingerie. Um, and the, uh, I'll say the comments or attention that I got 
was from most people talking about how she was crying, talking about how they made this fake porn about her and this and that and saying, well, now here it is. You are sexualizing everything. Um, so my question, before I get into it, my question to you is how do you feel about her doing the lingerie first and foremost? I seen it. That's talking about when she had that pink on, right? I, I think, think the one was, I saw, it was, it was red or pink. Yeah. It was, yeah. She didn't look even comfortable mm. to me. Like, just looking at her face, she didn't look comfortable. Um, I think she's at a point where she's just trying to run it up. She know the light ain't going to last. Hopefully it lasts as long as she make it last. But she knows it's a it's, a, it's an expiration date on, on everything. Mm-hmm. I think she's just really trying to do whatever to keep the bag going, keep her name out there. Um. Is lingerie sexualizing when I t- when I signed up for it? Like it's 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 two ways to look at sex. You know what I'm saying? You can look at sex in the way of something beautiful, some you know loving, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. But then you can look at porn side of it and be like, it's hardcore, it's it's rough, mm-hmm. it's uh, degrading at some points. You know but what we, I'm saying? But I think it's the sign of the times because. When back in the day, when you would get your Sears catalog and you go and you look through the bras or I mean, with the Victoria's like, Secrets, yeah. you didn't automatically think pornography, right? You know what I'm it saying? Was, it and, was and even underwear. even now, it's just okay. She got on lingerie. Okay, half of you men don't even respect don't even respect lingerie, right? And and half of these comments, bro, be coming from men who who mad because whoever they at it with the at the crib can't look like that in their clothes, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um. I'm I'm a man for that kind of stuff. Do I want to see a- Angel Reese? No, because I think she's like what twenty one, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah like just an young. age thing for me. I'm I'm good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but if that's how she, I mean, she ain't out here showing a a pussy or nothing like that. She got right. on lingerie. Like right. if if Naomi Campbell can wear it, why can't she wear it? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like pick our battles better, man. Stop picking on people and su- especially black women and support them, man. Yeah, like because she yeah. could either look like that. What's the little young girl? I ain't seen her on nothing but her draws. What's the little rap girl uh, from here? Lotto? Yeah, I ain't seen her in nothing but her draws. Yeah. So I'm like, this is, I guess this is how she make her money. Like, mm-hmm. I would look at that more in a kind of a foul way than I would look at what mm-hmm. Angela I, Reese, I, Angel I, Reese did. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I guess they looking at the fact of what she said and then she turned around and put on lingerie. Mm-hmm. It's, she, it's, she she modeling though. It ain't like uh, she, that's what I was trying to say. That's yeah, two like yeah, totally she, completely she different. She modeling. Things. I think it's for like Victoria's Secret or something, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Like, you yeah. know, I didn't look too deep all into it, but I don't see a problem with her modeling. Right. And and, and that's what I was looking at. Um first off, I want to say I think that the world just puts um sexuality on women so much to where they feel like they have to in order to advance themselves. Um so you look at um anybody that like the WNBA for for instance most times you look at them up until now within the last two years people didn't expect for them when they was doing their walkthroughs to come in in heels and, and nice clothes right. or whatever and so now that they're doing that they was like oh okay well let's make some money off of it now so that's what's happening now so for Angel Reese which she already had stuff going before the season started because right. she had the shoes she had some other stuff so she's a marketing machine to where she's taking care of herself so for me to see her in lingerie was like she's still working I you mean, know what i mean she got to do what she got to do to build her brand they women are wrong or they they damn if they do they damn if they don't in right certain, in certain cases like mm-hmm. if she come out with timberlands and jogging suits on every day they gonna stereotype her like that yep. she come out with looking like a lady looking you know Nice, whatever they talking mm-hmm. about it like that. They can't wear for losing, man. It, it's, it's some dude sitting on the couch, man, with a hole in his drawers, making all these statements, man. I ain't thinking typing. That. Yeah, you know what and, I'm saying. And that's, that's what bothers me and, is that they they get on there and they just start typing, and it's always from a negative space. And I'm like, dude, when was the last time you got late? Like, like go get you. That's some what I'm saying. Like it be it be men critique women so much 
that I just I started looking at the man that's critiquing and be like, What's wrong with you? Oh, you mad because you can't get that kind of woman. <laughs> right. So you're gonna find everything wrong about her. Like, come on, yeah, man, let's let's man. let's grow up, man. Let's grow up. Yeah, it's ridiculous, man. Shout out to her too, man. Keep doing your thing. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And what you said on the age thing, another person that doing that too, which I'm okay with her getting it, but I know how young she is and she's very getting very successful. Well, she is successful in my eyes. Uh, it's Coco Golf. She's young. Yeah. And now you'll see certain pictures with her in bathing suits or tight clothes, whatever. They, but they she's women, a she's man. a young adult. Yeah, they, this is what they're gonna do. Yeah, so like, don't look at it as them sexualizing themselves. They selling they 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 building their brand. That's part of what their nobody, brand is. Nobody buys anything that's damaged, that looks damaged. Right. So you ain't gonna buy a car with a dent in it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Unless you just get a cash car, you gotta do what you gotta do. Mm-hmm. You ain't gonna buy lingerie for anybody if you don't see what it look like. Look like. The, what it look like on the rack and what it look like with a body. In. Nope. You know what I'm saying? So when we got the Sears catalogs and even Jet, you know what I'm yep. saying? Jet. Beauty of the week. Mm-hmm. Like they wasn't on their business suits. Right. So yeah. I mean, you know, man, let's grow up, man. Let's Yeah. That's that's what it really came down to. Time and okay. place for everything. You know? Now if she Showing up to the game in lingerie. Okay, we got issues. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, let's talk about time this. Time and place for everything, man. She picked yeah. the time to do what she needed to do. So I salute her, man. Let's get off their back. Well. All right, all right. Uh moving on. Uh subject of the day. Our friend Kurt. Shout out Kurt. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let you have this. I still don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Shout out, Kurt. I'm just going to say what the, the question was because his analogies be way, <laughs> they be far east and I can't I can't do it. Go ahead, um, no. But he, he came out and he, he posted something saying that men that make six figures don't want women that make six figures. In his world. It, he, it, didn't, he didn't say that. But yeah, but I, I, exactly. Parentheses in his, world, in his world, which is yeah. how we think and when it comes to that. Um, and the comments went, not crazy, but they went mostly women were uh, responding to it. Um, I, I'm I'm gonna start off and saying no, know, know who the speaker is. Sometimes you have to understand that's where the the confusion with social media comes in with me. Um, if I know you're somebody that, let's say you talking about you hate Chevys, you know. Uh, and, and you only drive Fords, but you've never, I know that you've never even tried to drive a Chevy or none of that, none of that stuff. I know at that point you just promoting your Ford, but I need to know that behind that you've never tried Chevy. So I can't take your word for law. So when I say that to kind of use an analogy, sometimes you got to look at how people post, what they post about all the time and the energy that they give off all the time. And so some. In his case, sometimes the energy is just because of who he is, but the messages be right on. I, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes yeah. people can't look past the speaker. He, like my brother Umar, like you have a real issue with Umar, but mm-hmm. you you will acknowledge when he right. right or wrong. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Some people can't do that with Kurt because he's he's very it, it, he's very out there. Like sometimes Kurt messages might hit you later on. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Especially when it comes to women, he speaks very, I'm going to say, He's very opinionated on ladies, and he never really. I've never seen Kurt, and I ain't gonna say he never done it. I've never seen a message from Kurt appreciating women for anything. You know what I'm saying? I just I've never seen it. And considering, you know, you do have a daughter, not to you know put his business mm-hmm. out there, but he does have kids. Mm-hmm. And the one is a daughter. Um, we have to we have to be careful the things we say as men with daughters because they look up to us in certain ways. Right. So if we're downing them and every time we get a chance, what do you, your daughter, she trusts you, you're the first love of her life, the first man. What do you think she takes from that? And I'm not saying that, you know, he's having that issue, but I be very careful what I say to my daughters because I'm, I'm they, I'm they first and they last line of defense. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I just, I just, I, some of his messages they go like this one right here. I didn't even dive in. I seen some tires and some <laughs> ladies, and I was like, how we get with this these two together? Yeah. And so I was just like, somebody gonna have to break this down to so a compound because I'm like, I don't, he, I don't want to say that crazy, but I know it's a message of everything he says. So you just gotta find a message. Yeah. Um, 
it was and it was more so uh and I think on a broader spectrum most most men look at it as um guys that make a certain type well six figures as he was saying don't want a woman that makes six figures and that's under the assumption that the woman that makes those six figures is more career driven versus trying to be whatever type of woman it is that you're looking for and that's where all of the angles come in because if i'm a man that makes six figures and say my my loyalty falls into or the the things that i want in a woman is her being uh you know uh, cooking at home her cleaning the house and things of that nature if she's able to do that and still make six figures i'm perfectly fine with it now if i'm the type of person that i, I make the six figures and i say um I want relationship goals. She got to make this much too. And then she's making six figures, but the relationship itself is not really there. It's just, we look good on paper. You know, it's a lot of different angles to go into that. So it, it boils down to what that dude is actually looking for. But I think he was going based off of men that make that type of money will always bring in a woman that doesn't make that type of money because they don't have to put forth the effort in the money aspect, but put forth the effort of, I hate to say this, submitting and doing what it being a support system to the dude and things of that nature. And to me, both can be done at the same time. You can still make your money and you can still be a support system and be there for your man or be that, that lady to your man without an issue. But you do have some women that are so very focused on their career to where they don't put a lot of energy into their relationships and they take on the, the space of saying if, like a dude that would just take anybody in and take it for what it is and go from there. But there's so many angles with that. I think when you get in a relationship, like you're serious, y'all moving in together, y'all need to have expectations for the other. Y'all need to have a conversation with expectations. If you make it six figures and I don't need you to, we might have that conversation and look, I need you to, I don't need you to, I don't need, we don't need your money. Mm -hmm. We need some of you. We need some. We don't need all, we don't need you to make a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. We just need you to make sure whatever you need to do for you, you can do. I got the, I got the foundation. Right. You know what I'm saying? If it's some astronomical you want, you need to be able to, to handle that. Mm -hmm. But the foundation is covered. So do I need you to do overtime or, you know, pick up another job. I don't need you to do that. Mm -hmm. What I need from you is this. I need I need you to know how to cook. Me and my homeboy just had a conversation this morning. We be I be hungry before I be horny. That's that's his quote of the, of, of, <laughs> of, 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 of the year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I be hungry one. before I be hungry. I be horny. Mm -hmm. So I, I need you on that level. Cooking, I mean cleaning, we both should be able to clean. Right. So that we ain't go, I ain't breaking nobody to be nobody's maid, mm -hmm. nothing like that. Right. We because we we both adults should be able to clean up. Right. As far as on the money side, I think a man that's worried about a, a woman making a hundred thousand plus, you're intimidated by the fact that, and I'm just this is just how I look at it. She might make more money than you, or she might be an equal when it comes to that financial side, so you can't manipulate her. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the times when men make more than a woman, it's, it's on some manipulative. We use it in mm -hmm. in ways that we don't even, sometimes we ain't even conscious that we do it. Right. But it gets done. Mm -hmm. So if a woman that had that done to her before, I'm pretty sure she's going to be like, yo, I got to make sure that don't happen. Mm -hmm. so that's a trauma that needs to be addressed as well. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't think, I don't see a problem with a woman making that kind of money. Cause I think that all the women, like I said, I know a lot of women that make great money mm -hmm. and you know what they issue with They issue is they ain't money is that they can't just find a dude to appreciate decent, the yeah, fact a decent cat. that they got his back and they just, and all they want to do is rub their feet with somebody in bed at night. Yeah. That's all. They, but they want to make sure you worthy right. of rubbing the feet with, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, just like we want to make sure they worthy of rubbing the feet. They want the same thing right. that might come with a little pushback, which you should want in a woman anyway. You shouldn't want a woman to just do what you what, what you say. I I I, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. Let me <laughs> yeah, speak for I'll me. Be bored I don't. Yeah, yeah, you know I what I'm saying. So when it comes down to a man saying I don't want a woman making six figures because she's career driven, but if she was a bum, you would call her that too. 
but they would be quicker to deal with that bomb because what you just said, they but, can but, manipulate the situation. But like, like I situation. did say on the show, though, men, we're, we're saviors. And mm-hmm. and I know I know Ty don't like the fact that I <laughs> use that word. But when it comes down to it, a man has to be able to save whatever happens in his relationship. Mm-hmm. Financially, emotionally, he's responsible for everything. That's just the, that's who we are as men. That's how we were put here to be. Mm-hmm. You might not like the word saving. And her comment was, didn't nobody ask you to be that? Sure they did. When we was when we was designated to be the protectors, mm-hmm. that's, the, that's part of the job. Yeah. So, I, I mean, if you mad that she can't, she don't have to def, the, the, uh, depend on you like that, that's your own issue. Mm-hmm. If you mad that you got to handle the business at hand, then that's your issue, bro. But you can't be mad at a lady that decided one day she wanted to make a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars. You can't be mad. She went to college, bro. She ain't supposed to go to college and become. You know, I ain't gonna use that because that's your example all the time. <laughs> she wasn't supposed. She wasn't. She wasn't supposed to put in this work to get his degree and then just settle for a blue collar. Mm-hmm. That ain't what she went to school to be. Right. So now you mad at the fact that in her twenties, because usually it happens in, for ladies, it happen in their twenties. They get the career that they put their mind to, and they got it. Now you mad that she got what she what she yeah. what she wanted out of life? Yeah, so you go thing. Like that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so so, you in, like, what do you want? You yeah. want you want the McDonald's? That's your shit. Let me die. <laughs> you want the you want the fifty thousand mm. dollar, or you want the lady that's a little higher in a, in a hundred thousand? Like mm. you have to pick for yourself, but you can't uh, put a. Uh, uh, bash this lady because she make a, a hundred plus. You right. can't bash her for that's crazy. Dudes, is it, that's the thing. Dudes are very insecure and a lot of people don't like to talk about that especially when it's coming from a woman. Like if it's another dude, it's like, man, he gonna do what he gonna do. But when it's a chick, um, you know, if you, somewhere, like I said, I had a story. One of my friends, she was dating this guy. She worked for the feds in D.C. And she said she, she didn't like to tell people what kind of Money she made. Shout out DC. I just met a, a great, a great couple from DC. Shout out to them. Shout out DC. She said she didn't like to tell people what kind of work she did or the kind of money she would make because dudes were intimidated. She said she went out on a couple dates with guys, and she said what she would do was she wouldn't let them walk into her car. She had a Range Rover at the time. I don't know what she got now, but she had a Range Rover at the time, and she said. A couple of times she went and they walked into her car and they was like, "Oh, that's yours." She was like, yeah, it's mine. She said she wouldn't hear from the dude no more. You know, just straight up. And I, she was like, I know it's based off of because of when they saw my car. Uh, and they were intimidated by it. And I've heard other stories of women just talking about, like when Jazz was here. And they found out how, you know, with her having her own brand. And she said with her truck, she had a fender yeah, bender. She, she just, she just leave it in there. She tripping with that, too. On purpose. Yo, shout out to Jazz, man. She tripping. <laughs> She tripping with that too. Cause she says she's met guys that once they realize how much she her earning potential is, yeah. they fall back because of, because of the ego but, situation. But, but so there's a flip side of that coin though. And what's that? Because you will meet a woman, man, who make great deal of money, and they don't know how to be on the other side. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I've experienced so, that. So maybe that's what he's talking about. Yeah, but he yeah. can't put that on everybody, though. That's Kurt, man. You got to like I told you, <laughs> man. You, put always, that on you, you always got to break it down. And that's why when I people mean, read it, yeah, they so, going in the comments you know, like, you, "Come on, dude." It, it is that flip side that definitely money does dictate um, behavior, and uh-huh. especially when somebody is very successful, they they behave in a different a manner that somebody that. You know that's under them might not be able to handle, and yeah. and but you should always stand on your square regardless if you make the lower fifties or the mm-hmm. the high two hundreds. Like to me, if if you got yours, like let's say you you know you meet a woman she made more than you, mm-hmm. but you secure in your pocket, whatever she say to you, you should be able to deal with, right? And just make a decision based on I'm gonna deal with her or not. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I don't do need you. I right. I like having you. Right. I don't need you though, mm-hmm. and that's I think that's what Kurt kind of he kind of loses me because people that don't need you, they ain't about to deal with your nonsense, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. oh, 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 they just ain't they don't have to. Mm-hmm. Like, 
And then people that need you, they kind of take a little a more of your mouth than, than they need to. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But they it's something that you benefit in them. If people you ain't really benefiting nobody, they ain't about to, the they way. ain't trying to hear none of that. Yeah, you, know the <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're on the way. And 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 that's the one thing um I think people have to realize too is when you start moving in those spaces, if you're dealing with a woman that makes more money than you, the things that you bring to the table, she can't pay for. So she's going to be, uh, she's going to value you for the type of person you are to her and not necessarily might, what she can go and pay for. I ain't going to say she can't pay for it. I'm saying it might take a little more time. No, no, no. I'm going to say she can't pay for it because if I make you feel safe and secure with every time you're around me, yeah. you can't pay nobody to do that. Let you go get a bodyguard. Oh, you talking about on that level. Okay, yeah, my on that my, level. My bad, brother. Yeah, yeah. My so bad. I'm saying in a sense of, and that's where a lot of men mess up because they look at it, they put all of the values in the money. And a lot of times you give intangibles that you can't pay for. And if you can't understand that these are what the things that you're supposed to be able to bring and make a woman feel a certain way, the money is not gonna matter. You don't think women do that too, though? What put the more value into the money? I, like they—that's part of their security. <sighs> so just like when you said earlier, us being the saviors, quote unquote, or the protectors, finances is part of that. So but, I think that goes but, into but play. You, but you can be a very—you can be secure at seventy thousand, right? But will a woman give you the same? Chance at seventy thousand that she give a dude two hundred thousand. I would think so, depending on how you treat her. I don't believe that though. Cause you know why? I'm a, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say that because, and I can't speak on if this if the guy has the same values and move in the same way. So be it. Goes to the highest bidder. <laughs> <laughs> but most guys, and and if you talk amongst women that are in the dating field right now. Most guys that make a lot of that money, they don't put a lot of effort into those intangibles because they know they can pay for everything. And they know in society, that's gonna that's shinier than the guy that uh, we can we can do, you know, um raise on the river once every two months. Where this right. other guy, he doing roof Chris. every time y'all hook up, y'all right. doing roof Chris and this and that. Yeah, you're gonna go for that. But um that same guy that can just pay it off, he's not going to spend time to try to learn that you like roses and give you some roses or something like that. Or whenever y'all out, he pulling your chair out and opening the door, little stuff that... So you saying the, the little things. The intangibles. Yeah, get you further. Get than, you further than the money. Than the money. I don't agree. I'm sorry. I don't agree. That, that's a, <laughs> that's going to be a good one. That's a, that's, that's a conversation to be had. That's debatable. I, 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 I'm hope. I, I'm hoping that you can change my mind, <laughs> but as of right now today, I don't agree. You said yeah. today. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> you know I get it. I just I get it. Where we live in right now, dog. Of course. Just, you know. Of course. That that that, that pocket going to get you in that door regardless. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to get you started, but is it going to keep them around? Now? That's the question. Then you're talking about how long I want you, what, what I got you here for. If if I make the most money, mm -hmm. like in the, it's a significant amount, what I got you here for. You might have to. Well, that's if you genuinely like the I'm, person I'm, or not. I'm, even if you genuinely like you, like, what I got you here for. I'm, I might lay you to death. I ain't got you here for that. I got you here for this, though. Mm. I'm just saying. like That's where all them variables come into play. <laughs> Yo, <I'm just> <laughs> and that's on both sides. You know what I'm saying? I got you. you. Might, the chick might have six figures, and she, she just liked the way you dress. But after that, she liked to go hang out with this other cat, too. I, so it I, is I, what it I, is. I, 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 it's just yeah. part of the game. Kurt. Lead the tires in the women love. Man. That, <laughs> that threw me off. I was like, tires in the women love. What are we talking Kurt, about? Yeah. Uh, for people that don't know, and like I said, Kurt, we, we good folk, and I appreciate everything he do. But Kurt was, he was a huge fan of Kevin Samuels. And with the Kevin Samuels thing, Kevin Samuels was almost like a starter for this community called the Red Pill community that was online. And what the Red, Red Pill community was, uh, it was a bunch of men, like the Fresh and Fit podcast, where they would talk, literally kind of degrade women and just try to show men superiority. And it got so sickening to where it, it was just a lot of people were buying, a lot of men were buying into it. And it just isn't 
Of course, if you look at it, you'll get some stuff out there that makes sense. But overall, it was nothing that could really change how men and women interact with each other. And to me, it was it was very negative towards women. And all the people that was popular doing that have either been demonetized or offered or just kicked off the internet because they went too far with it. And it's not even a real community anymore. Most of those guys ended up, you know, getting caught with prostitutes and things of this nature. So all this stuff that they was talking about was like, y'all ain't even out here trying to be with women for real. Y'all just want to pay for everything. And so it was just kind of like knowing where all that energy comes from. Sometimes you'd be like, you know what? I don't even want to entertain this. <laughs> That's a conversation. Kurt, Kurt a great guy, man. So, I, ain't, I, I don't want to, you know, share no... I don't want to, you know, dull his light anyway. Kurt's a great guy. Kurt just, he got his opinion like everybody else. We don't, there's a lot of people that agree with Kurt. They just might not have come out and say it, mm. but, you know, he's a great guy. He oh, just, yeah, uh, his views are a little, you know, different than a lot of people. And I respect him that he's able to, you know, he's still, he's stand on it. Yeah, I respect him for that. So, yeah, you know, keep going, on. Kurt. He's somebody, somebody, somebody going for it. Yeah. Just like somebody go for what, what the masses say. So, I mean, you know, no. I ain't always right or or care to be. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So do your thing, dog. Yes, indeed. I got one more thing. This one something I thought about. Um, I don't know how I came up with this. I think I saw a video or something. Anyway, how do you feel about, say, when you go to out, out of the country and when you get off the plane, you hear trap music. You get in the car, you hear hip hop. I, I, I love it. You love it. I love it. Okay. Explain why. I, I disagree. The expansion. Okay. I, I love it. I love the fact that somebody in a basement made a song that made it worldwide. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing. That's just like if we got off a plane, went into a shop, and we seen us on a screen, dog. Like, even I still meet people that say they watch the show, bro, and I have no idea who they are. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. I love it, dog. I, I love the fact that a music that they thought was gonna last ten years at the most. Mm. It's, it's the most powerful thing out here right now. So right. Even, even if we go to Africa, or whatever, and they playing it, I love it. Mm. I love it, dog. Okay, I agree with you on that. On that perspective, the point that that I don't like because I remember one time I went to Jamaica. As soon as I got off the plane, I I heard trap. When I go to places like that, I want to hear the native music. I want to hear what is popular here. I want to hear what made this this. Um, and so if I don't ever, because I'm eclectic, I like to hear a lot of different types of music. If I go somewhere and I never get access to that music, I'd be a little upset. But, but with that though, is you have to, you have to map out your own trip. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is Crespo's a great. Go see the native. Yeah. Great. But yeah. Crespo's a great tour guide. Mm -hmm. But you got to realize this, this comes from the mind of, of a of what he want. He think everybody would want to see. Mm -hmm. That might not be the same lane you in. You know what I'm saying? So you might be like, well, y'all go do that. Right. I'm about to go in this hole in the wall and, and do what I need to do for me. Because it's right. people, I, I think the, the, the misconstrued with people when they go out of town together is they got to do everything, everything together. together. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nah. Like this is my, I paid my money to experience what I need to experience. Mm -hmm. Like even we did it. When we went shark diving, everybody didn't go, just me right. and Crespo. Yeah. And then uh and Gam, and Gam. shout out to Gam. You know what I'm saying? But I, I think that's the problem like in situations like that. Like y'all could be sitting at the at the Airbnb and you found something and it's right up your alley. Mm -hmm. It's for you to say, yo, I'm about to go hear this. Yeah. Whoever wanna go can go. Even if you gotta go by yourself, which you probably won't, because somebody gonna be like, I'm just gonna go with you so you don't go by You're yourself. By yourself. Mm -hmm. People be scared to do that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I think the music that you want to hear or wherever of that native country or town is there, but you got to get off the beaten path it. of what your friends want to do okay. and go That's to what it. You're saying. You know what so I'm saying? So on the broader aspect, like, like where the world will be. Absolutely. They're going to play. They're going to play they, what the world absolutely. is listening. Okay. Absolutely. Because that's I what it, they, they had to get your money. Mm -hmm. And and hearing reggae or you know whatever spoken words you like to hear, mm -hmm. that might not bring in the same money as trap in Jamaica. Right. You know what I'm saying? Where you got the the ladies of Jamaica dancing to the trap 
and it look a little different if you know what i mean you know what i'm saying it look yo, all the it's, way it's uh, you know what i'm saying it ain't no no preservatives in that right. you know what i'm saying so you know <laughs> real nutrition you know what i'm saying so yeah i get it that's why i say i love it man i love when we go when we go out man and mm. we hear the music that somebody made man that's how i look at it like somebody made this in the basement bro they they probably never thought their music get played of course in israel or, um Africa, uh, different parts of Africa, and mm -hmm. you know, you might go to Ukraine or something, and you'd be like, "Damn, is that Ti?" Right. You, you know right. what I'm saying? But I think that's dope. Mm -hmm. I just think whatever you when you, when you go out of town, man, you have to make your trip what you make it. Yeah. And like, and like I said, he's a great tour guide, but oh, yeah. he still got a mind of this. What he Crespo's I'm gonna pick this. the safe shit. Yeah. Excuse my language, but he gonna pick everything safe, everything on that level. You might want to go down to the hood. And just to see what you need to see, mm -hmm. but because you don't research it, you like yo, it's a, it's touristy, but you got to be, you got to look a little careful. Yeah, yeah. you might want to go to that. Ain't nobody gonna bother you, mm -hmm. but you might want to get down and you know, let me walk in the club and see you out there doing it. You know, like, hey <laughs> yeah. man, cut the music, get anybody. <laughs> yeah, but I get what yeah. you're saying though. Yeah. Yeah, I get what you're saying. And and what I would, you know, a lot of times what I would do is um, and you know, if I was with somebody that was cool and open with it is. When you go to these certain places, especially a lot of the Caribbean touristy spots, because they don't make a lot of money. Right. So you get there and you converse with the people that work there, the bartenders or whoever else. They don't even hang there. Right. So talk to them. I've done it plenty of times. Yeah. Talk to them. What time you get off? I get off. I said, what you doing? We trying to get out. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom. Hey, well, meet me at this spot. Boom, boom. We get there. We spend money with them. They're going to have a good time because they ain't got to pay for that. Absolutely. And I got the security more so because they're taking us. We with them. Absolutely. So we ain't just so, oh, the Americans pulling up. Let's go on and get them. Nah, it's more so, oh, and he at work. So right. he ain't finna do nothing crazy. Right. You know what I mean? Because when we leave, he still got to come back to work. Absolutely. So I've done that a few times because I do like to see some of the the native type stuff and then sometimes i just don't want to go nowhere i just want to sit <laughs> see, drink you, you and so, it be you faded so, you so moody, <laughs> you got i am <laughs> i am but, but no, it be like that yeah man, man but yeah, i definitely love hearing hip-hop when i'm uh when i'm in abroad absolutely yeah. okay all right okay anything else you got bro before we go on and get up out of here no no <laughs> Dang, like that no hey man Go ahead and call whoever you was thinking about and ain't talked to them. And just tell them, hey, I was just thinking about you. I just wanted to reach out. I hope everything all right. A lot of the people that y'all assume is okay because they always the ones checking on everybody else. Check on them, folks. That's real. Sometimes they, they, they just need somebody to say, hey, man, I thought about you. Just wanted to see how you're doing. Man, reach out to your people, man. We got people falling out all the time. And you always be like, man, I was just talking to her the other day. I was just talking to her the other day. Right. I'll let your folk, man. Let them know how you feel. Just check up on your folks. That's all I got, man. Yo, I'll see y'all next week. Um, We right. back to recording. Yeah. Oh, no, we won't see y'all next week. We oh. might have something a little special. Yeah, we, we might, might have, have a little. Special. We got a little Zoom or something coming in the middle of the week. Yeah. So uh, look out for that. Um, be safe out here. That's all I got. All right. Well, I'll let you hold it in a row. <laughs>